Welcome to GovCast. I am your host, Managing Editor Amy Kluber. I'm your host, Melissa Harris. Just a couple months ago, Ted Kalk was selected to chair the newly formed Federal Chief Data Officer Council. It's no surprise he's also CDO at USDA, an agency that has become a leader across government in its data efforts and focus on the customer, that being the millions of farmers, ranchers, and citizens who rely on the agency's services nationwide. Melissa and I talked to Ted about his journey to the agency and where he sees data innovations going government-wide. Welcome to GovCast, Ted. It's great to have you today. Thank you. So you started your career in government, not on the civilian side, but the military side, specifically in the Navy. What was that role like and how did you find yourself pivoting over to the USDA? That's an interesting question because there's quite a few things that were valuable about my experience in the Navy. When you're asked to lead people at 22 or 23 years old and you find yourself on a 500-foot ship with 300 sailors from every state, all of whom have diverse backgrounds and skill sets, at least for me personally, this really helped to reinforce what was a formative experience as the son of an immigrant from Syria and Lebanon and now as the partner of another immigrant about the real strengths that we have in this American experiment to learn from and draw upon others, to broaden our own limited perspectives on any particular issue. And that's something that's really important when you're 23 years old, but it's also something as a leader that's a lifelong key to things like innovation, problem solving, and also serving a diverse constituency that an agency like USDA serves every day. And certainly as I transitioned to the civilian side, it gave me a deep appreciation for the value of public service, which I think is one of the competitive advantages that we have in government service, that we're focused on achieving outcomes for the larger public each and every day. Awesome. And you also worked at USDA's Office of the CIO of Rural Development, which I'm sure covers a lot of territory, both geographically and technically. How did you see the role of technology assisting in improving rural infrastructure, such as broadband? Yes, I had the great opportunity to work in rural development mission area, and I've also had the great pleasure of working with each of our agencies across USDA in the delivery of their respective missions. USDA is uniquely positioned, I think, by virtue of the fact that we have over 2,000 county offices across the country. And in some respects, that really makes us the face of the federal government in rural America. So whether that was in rural development, helping to deploy broadband or assisting with community facility development, things like libraries and hospitals or serving farmers and ranchers. You know, the services we provide to farmers, ranchers, and rural communities sends a strong message about the kind of government we have. Is it responsive to the needs of the people who work and live in this country? And to a very great extent, the kinds of technology solutions that we create and the data that's available at the fingertips of employees who are then better able to serve these people is a representation of the kind of democracy we have. So for me, if you can keep that in the front of your mind when you wake up every day, it serves to ensure that your work and life-solving technology challenges is infused with an even higher level of meaning and purpose. The USDA is spearheading a lot of initiatives across government. We actually had CIO Gary Washington on the show, and he talked about how the agency is a lighthouse agency for the rest of government. I know it's involved in the Centers of Excellence at GSA. So I'm curious, how have you seen the agency's impact evolve over the past eight years while you were there? Sure. So I'm glad you had a chance to talk to our CIO, Gary Washington. And just in talking in terms of some of the things that have happened most recently in collaboration with the GSA Centers of Excellence, we've done a tremendous amount of modernization, things like data center consolidation, where we consolidated 37 data centers over the course of two years, where we've flattened our network from 17 networks to one network in a really rapid fashion. But one area that I've been focused on as the CEO has been standing up enterprise data analytics, which really didn't exist before. So that was a new endeavor for us. And we're really pleased that we've made a lot of progress on that and also on the federal data strategy activities. We set a goal for ourselves of ensuring that our leaders had one-click access to the data that they needed to make decisions. And so we stood up an enterprise analytics platform and went through a really iterative process of rapidly deploying those capabilities across each and every mission area at USDA. So at the end of it, state conservationists have access to things like a real-time scorecard with metrics that help them more efficiently administer their government resources in support of conservation. Forest supervisors in the Forest Service have access to an integrated view of things like timber sales and fuels treatments and HR data so that they can better manage their individual forests across the country. 
And many of our leaders and scientists in the Office of Food Safety have access to really timely data around the status of laboratory sampling and public health indicators for food processing establishments that we regulate. So it's just really been great to see all of that development and work across the IT space at USDA. I'm also sure that USDA oversees a lot of data assets, given its widespread presence across the United States. What type of data challenges do you encounter given your position as the chief data officer? Is it in challenges in ingesting large volumes of data or gaining visibility into unstructured data? And how do you overcome any challenges you may encounter? Sure. So I, I may pivot away from the technical challenges because really the biggest challenges we had were around bringing insights from the vast amount of data that you mentioned that we have and enabling the organization to begin to leverage it more holistically. And so one of the things we had to overcome was skepticism, right? People don't always realize that they could get access to better insights than they have. They might believe that our data dashboarding was a superficial effort and won't get them to anything meaningful, or they think that the data might be too low quality or maybe hard to get. And so we really started with a human-centered approach to engaging people on the questions that they had. We wanted to make sure that the questions that they were asking were the best and biggest questions that they could ask and not limited by maybe the perspective they had about the data they thought they could get access to. And then using those questions, we developed a really iterative approach of developing dashboards, applying various analytical techniques like natural language processing to bring them really new insights and to get them excited about what was possible. And using that as a springboard to integrating data and developing an overall strategy that's led into where we are now. And so I think the most important part was that shift from skepticism to more hope and optimism, where we raise the expectations of the leaders in our organization about what was possible. And so I think for us, that was probably the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity. This is something many agencies are going through right now, especially when we're dealing with the culture of some of these modernization initiatives. Are there any particular tools or strategies that you have found most useful, maybe in frameworks like Agile or DevOps? Certainly having an iterative approach to development, moving very rapidly to deliver value has been a key to you know, what we've found to be successful at USDA. Often when someone asks you a question, I mentioned those questions, it'll be a really good question. But when you bring them something to look at, often they will say either, yes, that you answered my question or perhaps there's a little bit to work on. But very often also they'll say, I have an even better question now because I can see the data in a new way. So that iterative process of engaging people and continuing to develop really does seem to lead to much better outcomes and also to help with the maturation of the process. And by the way, also gives visibility into where we might have some data issues by not hiding it. You know, sunlight's the best disinfectant is what we like to say in terms of getting to better data quality too. Great. And I guess one of the most big pieces of news recently is that you were appointed the chair of the new Federal Chief Data Officer Council. Can you speak to perhaps what some of the biggest challenges across federal agencies are in using data strategically? And how do you think some of the challenges you face as USDA Chief Data Officer make you equipped to lead other chief data officers in their data-driven initiatives? I think probably the most significant challenge is that the role is new in government. So it was formally established as a requirement under the Evidence Act. And so many agencies that did not have CDOs have appointed CDOs to step into that role, hire people from the private sector or found people within the organization that had deep, deep knowledge or expertise. And so I think, you know, the role itself is well known in the private sector, but the value that it can deliver in government is just uh, tremendous. Really, I think at this point, hard to quantify. So, you know, from my own experience, starting as a single CDO in an agency, having to build a business-driven approach where we now have a shared service and enterprise analytics and teams that help us to manage us across the department, as well as assistant chief data officers in each of our mission areas. Now, many of these CDOs are beginning kind of from the beginning as well. And so, you know, that experience that I have and starting from that same point is something that I'm hoping to share and also just building the broader community because I know that there are many others who have also had a lot of challenges to overcome in their own roles. But for each CDO, I think it'll be thinking about what are the one or two things in implementing the data strategy that are going to deliver value that people will see and say, oh, now I understand what a chief data officer can do for us. I think that's probably one of the bigger challenges or opportunities for CDOs as they're beginning their roles for agencies. And the creation of the Federal CDO Council was one of the 2020 action plans for the federal data strategy, a 10-year plan born out of legislative requirements such as the Evidence-Based Policy Making Act, which you just touched upon. 
What are some of the goals you have in leading the council to deliver on the requirements from the data strategy and legislative requirements? Well, we're really excited, first of all. I got to start in the chair role in June. So, of course, we're still working to pull all of our ideas together. But one of our major goals is to develop a really vibrant learning community so that we ensure that agencies all have the resources and knowledge to facilitate implementation of data strategy. So we're doing a number of things like hosting information sharing sessions where CDOs and can we have we are the largest council in government. So we have a lot of resources and expertise that we can share We don't have to reinvent the wheel all of the time. So I think that's one of our big advantages. We also want to think about how CDOs are operating in different environments, whether that's a small agency or a large agency, because the situations may be very different. And we want to leverage that as well. I think there's a number of cross-cutting data challenges that we can focus on. You know, things like how do we share data and decision tools that are common across the government? Are there major common challenges like doing comments analysis from the public that may benefit from a shared solution? And of course, in looking at how we upskill the workforce, we see that as a really big opportunity to work together on strategies for hiring and for upskilling and those kinds of things. And of course, we want to work together to implement the federal data strategy and our individual agency action plans, as well as shaping the future of that data strategy with engagement from the CDOs on that board. Upskilling the workforce is something we also hear all the time, especially with the realm of cybersecurity. Agency leaders are talking about that, you know, nonstop, it feels like. Is there anything about the data efforts that should be taken into account when thinking about something in upskilling the workforce? Sure. I know this is something that agencies are thinking a lot about. We are all working on conducting workforce assessments to better understand what the gaps are. At USDA, we conducted a data management maturity and workforce assessment in 2019, and that really helped us to understand what kind of leadership roles we needed across our component agencies to manage our data strategy. We're going to be doing a second assessment to even dig deeper into what the data acumen for the general employee would be across all of our critical occupation series. But we've done quite a number of things to get people excited about data as well. So we've developed a dashboard adoption community practice where people come together every month to share best practices on data products they're creating and speed insight that they enable. We also have a advanced analytics community practice where we unearth and showcase institutional knowledge and experience. We've tried things like having data competitions where we have a common problem for one of our agencies that any employee across USDA is able to contribute to. And then to bring awareness about the value of things like dashboards, we've conducted much more broad scale training to over 7,000 employees in about 500 training sessions on analytics, visualization, and just understanding the kinds of insights that they can get by taking a new approach. And so I think this is something that a lot of agencies have a multi-pronged effort with as well. And we just see a lot of opportunity for us to continue that as we go forward. Great. And I know that lots of agencies are looking to AI and machine learning to drive more efficiency into their processes. Since data is the fuel for those kinds of automation tools, what do you think are some of the best practices for cleaning data and preparing it for those automated processes? I mean, we're certainly looking at you know, where we have bright spots with our data quality programs and improving data stewardship across the department is one of our major initiatives. We really think that data quality begins at the point of entry in the original source system. So even simple things like required fields or drop downs can have really big impact for improving where the federal government is with data quality. We can build in those early decisions in the right way. That leads to a lot of impacts downstream for ensuring that we have high quality data or even better data for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Certainly, you know, we want to decrease the amount of time that it's taking for analysts to clean data. So investing in those data management tools and data integration tools can, you know, have a lot of benefits for the time it takes us to get data in the right shape. And of course, having organizations agree on data meanings and connotations is something that's also important as well. Given your recent appointment on the CDO Council and looking ahead to the next year, What are some accomplishments that we should be looking out for in government right now that can come out of these data efforts? Well, certainly many of the steps that are outlined in the action plan for this year are foundational steps. They are enabling CDOs to begin to have an impact on their organization and to be recognized for that work. 
one of the things that I think will be most impactful is the cultural change that we talked about, kind of moving from skepticism to hope and optimism. I think by having this cadre of CDOs driving this work across government, that's certainly an aspiration that I have for the council itself and for individual CDOs at their agencies. Of course, I think we'll also really begin working hard on identifying some of the cross-cutting challenges that exist for us, whether that's on the infrastructure side or on data standards or integration. And through that first year, we'll have a really good roadmap for things that we can work together on to improve. So this foundational work, I think, will have an impact on the culture. And I'm really excited about the opportunity to work with so many fantastic people on what is actually the largest council in the government. That's a great way of putting it. Thanks, Ted. This was a great look into some of the data efforts. And of course, USDA being such a leading agency across the government on a lot of these initiatives, I was glad to hear more about it. So I look forward to seeing what comes out of the council and some of the data initiatives government-wide. Thank you. Really appreciate you having me on. GovCast is a production of Government CIO Media and Research. For more podcasts, head to governmentcio.com slash podcasts. If you liked what you hear, let us know by leaving us a review in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. GovCast is produced by Amy Kluber. Theme music provided by Big Hoax. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, contact us at sponsor at governmentcio.com. Governmentcio.com.